husband, you need to have a separate device to your wife. And the same applies to the children or young adults or single within the families. Let's just have, you know, a number of devices because we'll be going to different breakout rooms. Um, so I hope this is clear. And when the time comes to go into the rooms, um, a leader can either place you in the room or you can choose the right room that you know is applicable. So me, please ensure you have your name correctly on the, um, on the Zoom. Just name yourself correctly and we'll try and assign you to the, to the appropriate room. Praise the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to go straight into bringing our speakers or introducing our speakers um, before we go into the actual program for the day. So um, our rooms are divided into, or breakout rooms are divided into um, five sessions. We're going to have um, a room for the married brothers, um, married men and brothers, um, room for the married women and sisters, and then a room for singles and single parents. Now we're gonna tell you what age brackets will come, that will come under, but singles and single parents, young adults, there's a room for you. And then we have a room for, even though we've said over 70s, widows and widowers who are over 70s. So there's a room for them. Now, can I just point out that for those in that category, if you're slightly below 70, say 65 or 60, and you're a widow or a widower not looking to remarry, then can I say you can join that category of over 70s for widow and widowers. You can join that room, you can join that category. Um, that's if you're not looking to remarry, but if you are 60, between 60 and 70, or you're still going to be remarrying then, I would say, and you're single, a widow or widower, then by all means, join the single and single parent um, group. Um, and then we have our youths and under 18, we have a room, we have a class for them. They have a very wonderful session that will be going on in their, in their room and their class as well. So youth and under 18. Now, for our married brothers, we have healthy communication. Um, uh, sorry, married brothers and sisters in your separate rooms, we have healthy communication and interpersonal relationship in the family. For our singles and single parents, knowing God, and it's planned for me. Um, over 70s, widows and widowers aging gracefully. And then youths and under 18, we have healthy communication and interpersonal relationship in the family. So that is, those are the topics, the title of our workshop. Um, now I'm gonna say very quickly, I'll read out the bio or just introduce our speakers for each of the session, and then we'll... I'm sure you can relate to that name. So Brocade is um, one of our leaders in the region. Um, he's a leader in Borough, um, Borough Church, or Clapham Church, as it may be. And um, I must say he is by God's grace seasoned, and I mean really, really seasoned. You can call him an expert on this topic by the grace of God. Um, he's a married man uh, with children by the grace of God, and he's also a consultant in his own right in his field by God's the building industry, I must say, uh, many years of experience. But besides, I, I would say, yes, he has a lot to offer in wisdom and counsel and um, um, instruction from the Lord on this topic. So please, you want to do well, all our men, to tune in and be blessed in your class. Um, for our married sisters, um, you are really blessed, amen? Today is Mother's Day and um, the Lord has just, you know, so determined that we must, we must get our double mother's blessings. So we have in the house- uh, we have in the house our um, woman overseer. She's our woman overseer for the Yorkshire region. Her name is Sister Rachel Ebenoa. 
So she's Pastor Victor Ebenoa's wife, and she's married. She's a nurse by profession. She's got a hobby in writing, and she's authored two books. And um, beside that, she is very, very seasoned, you know, a wonderful woman of God. So down to earth, so humble, but she has a lot, and I mean a lot, to offer us in this field of healthy communication and interpersonal relationship from a place of experience, by the way. So she will be a blessing to our married sisters, and I believe the Lord, we are so happy to have her. You're welcome, Ma. Um, for singles and single parents, we're going to be having a pastor, Pastor Daniel Aim. Um, is our pastor in Portsmouth Church, um, as many of us know him, by the way. Um, he's also a personal friend. I must say, Pastor Daniel is a surveying consultant with so many decades in the building industry. Um, by God's grace, is a member of the marriage committee. Um, he has a lot of spiritual insight and guidance. Um, also has a heart for young people and singles and it will be sharing some wealth of wisdom with us. So please sit tight, don't miss out on the nuggets. And um, it comes with power and prayer, you know, to take you to the next level by God's grace. Um, over 70s or widows and widowers aging gracefully. We have our mommy in the house, mommy door, amen. The mommy is here for us. She is gonna bless us indeed. She is what I always say, our mother in Israel, amen? She's so caring, loving, a pray mother indeed. She continues to be gracious and always there to share, you know, our words of wisdom and counsel to the body, to us as a region. And if you, if you don't know her, I'm telling you the next time you, you're in the central church, make sure you say hello to her. She always has something, something for someone, amen? So please... Our over 70s, be ready. Mommy is here for us. She has been, by God's grace, in the past, our national, not just regional. She was a regional, but national uh, woman leader. So you can tell she definitely has a lot to teach us, to instruct us, and to guide us, and to bless us with. And the Lord will use her mightily in Jesus' name. Um, finally, our youth and under 18, healthy communication, interpersonal relationship in the family, we have a father of youth and children, amen. We have our brother, brother Alfred, and he is also our um, choir master in the region. Um, if you know brother Alfred like I do, you know he has a young heart. He's still young, by the way, fit and healthy and strong. And by the grace of God, he can relate to you because he's also got um, you know, a lot of youth within, <laughs> within his word. Um, so please be ready to learn. Um, and I believe he does a lot when it comes to training and communication by virtue of his profession as well, you know, from my little knowledge. So I believe he has a lot to teach us, to offer us, to instruct us, having raised children or still raising children in this environment. So you turn under 18, be, you're in for a time of learning and unlearning and relearning and getting blessed. And I pray that as we go into the sessions now, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. So very quickly, before we divide into our session, um, housekeeping, our teachers, we have 45 minutes for the actual workshop. So please take note. Our workshop will take us to um, six on the dots. And then we have just about 10, 15 minutes for Q&A. Still stay in the room. Have your question and answer in the room before we leave the breakout room. So we'll be expected to come back around 10 past, quarter past latest, um, quarter past six latest to come back to the general room. I hope everyone understands. So we can now assign us um, to the breakout room. PA, we can just start to assign everyone to their rooms. Thank you.
Hi guys, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? If you can hear me, just on mute. Just speak. Hello. Okay. Yeah, um, the speaker for these for this session is joining. I think they are having some sort of issues, so they've not joined. So please bear with us while we wait for them to join. Okay. Sorry. I, I said that the speaker for this session has some technical issues and they're not they are they will be joining us shortly. Oh, okay, thank you. Just a quick update. We're still um waiting for uh, waiting for the speaker to join. They're still having some issues. Bear with us. Um, apologies, everyone in here. Um, our teacher will join very shortly. Please, sorry for the, sorry for the delay.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray. Then have a, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, we are very grateful. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you for the gathering of your people together. Lord, as we come to you, we ask that your spirit and your power will bless us in Jesus' name. Speak to us, Lord, and use this channel of discussion as a great time of renewal to everyone. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Um, brethren, um, apologies, please, for the um, uh, the missed up. Um, we want to uh, have a quick discussion as brethren, and the theme of our discussion is how to know God. So, um. I will ask um, Brother Blessing, how do you know as an individual that you know God? It's a question. How do you as an individual know? Okay, okay. to me, sir. Yes, please. Okay. I will use practical example. Am I free to do that? Yes, please. Okay, now, like using myself as a case study, how I knew I know God is personally is beyond church going. I've I was one I was born into a church I was born into the church and I was practically a church goer, to, only to a point that I discovered that I was just. being pushed around now it came to a point that i became tired of being forced or being to do things and i asked myself one question this god my parents my dad my mom is always mentioning mentioning disturbing the whole house with is is there not something more than beyond what i is there not something important i should know more about this god now i started doing my own personal research towards knowing god and in the point of trying to know God, trying to know who this God is, I discovered that God is actually someone that I can easily approach, like even my heavenly father. And since then, anytime I pray, I see him answer it. Sometimes okay. I will not even uh, okay. pray. Me. Okay. Um, so, um, bro, blessing, you've, you've brought a very important thing to it. So, how did you know that the God that you are connecting is a is the true God that you are connecting to, but it's not some something that you haven't been sold down the drain or somebody you are following. So how did you know that? Okay, this time, this God I am following. One is He the true God, and I have no. I am personally convinced that this God I'm following is the true God. Please briefly. Okay. Okay, one, there is a spirit connection. Like, there is so there is this witness in my heart. It's just, I don't, I'm trying to see how to bring it out. It's so in-depth in me. When I, no matter what people tell me, I've encountered so many persons with different religions. And they will try to convince me on, on their own aspect. But there is that thing in my heart that is connecting with the God I'm talking about, which is he's so genuine. Okay, God bless you. Let's... And he's teaching my heart on how to do things right. Okay. And play within. Okay. Connection. Okay, God bless you, uh, bro, bro blessing. Um, please can um Sister Abigail quickly read um Uzziah chapter six, verse three. Uzziah chapter six, verse three. Please be, let's be very quick. Hosea chapter 6, 
verse 3. Okay, let me read quickly because of time. He said, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth, unto the earth. So please can MP, um, please your full name, please, because that's what you, you are coming across. So if you can, we are looking at knowing God, knowing God, knowing the will of God, knowing the purpose of God. So from the text where we are afraid, please, what did you, what can we learn from it? Please, um, MP, what's your full name, please? I'm and sorry, can you repeat the question again? It's Michael. My, oh, sorry, Michael. Um, the question is from where we have read, we are looking at the team knowing God. So from the text in Hosea chapter 6, verse 3, what did we know? What are the elements? What are the ingredients? that entails in knowing God. Um, Hosea chapter six, verse three. Um, the element I think tells with knowing God, one of its um blessed already touched on it in that he himself desiring to seek, and that we see that in the text where it says that if if it's a conditional, we have to desire it, we have to choose to go towards wanting to know God, and so in terms of if we desire to find God. If we desire to follow him, um, it will, it will come unto us. It will show himself to, to us. So, in, in other words, it's kind of it's we can connect it in a way to when Jesus Christ says, "Ask and you shall receive." It's when we ask of God to know Him, when we seek of God to know Him, we'll find Him. When we knock, it will be open to us. So, um, for us desiring and choosing to know God, that's when God will desire and choose to reveal himself. That um, that those who draw near unto him is those, those who choose to draw near unto God is those who God will draw near unto him. So it's, there's, um, there's a lot of personal responsibility involved and it's required. Okay. Choosing to know God. Okay. So if we look at the text, there is very, it lays the foundation of having personal revelation to God. It says that you have to know. You have to know. And you see, the secret of answers to prayer, divine revelation, is your personal knowledge, experience with God. You see, brethren, I just our discussion today is not just about, oh, I want to know God in marriage. Oh, I want to know God in... No, 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 that is not. It's having a fuller picture of who God is. Having a personal experience of who God is. And that is the starting point. And then he says that if really we, are, we, we have a heart to know God, he says that then shall we know... If we follow on, follow on, follow on means you are going deeper. You are going higher. Follow on means that it's not that, oh, I am born again. In every area of our life, our initial experience of God will not take us to where God wants us to be. But it's your personal conviction. It's your personal sacrifice. It's your personal journey you want to take with God. And the moment we have that heart, then shall we know if 
we follow on to know, then we, we see God's will becomes real to us in career, in finance, in marriage, in profession, in where to live, because the heart wants to know more of God. Thank you. Brother Francis, what do I need to know of God? We are saying that, how do I know? What do I need to know from God? Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, should the answer be from this text we've just read or just generally? It, 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 that text is just the foundation for our okay. discussion. But in generally, what are the things that you need to know from of from God. What are the things? Um, so um, I believe the essentials is actually knowing God for Himself, knowing God for who He is, right? Um, seeking Him, um, and, and and that's what the Bible has asked us to do in several passages of the Scripture. It says, "Seek the Lord while He may be found, and call upon Him while um, He is near." So um, it is in seeking of God, um, growing in the knowledge of God, growing to know his own person, his personality, then things now begin to unfold or begin to unravel in different aspects of life. So um, if one takes a step of maybe the basic disciplines of a disciple, so praying and studying the word, and then as he reveals himself to us in different aspects of our lives, is going to ask he himself will be the one also asking us, I mean, showing us where we need to be transformed, that we need to take um, practical steps to confirm. And then um, we could also, I think, also building on that confidence, we could also begin to seek for him in specific areas. Maybe it could be in our studies or it could be in a place of work or just in um, everyday life where we need um, counsel or we need um, instruction from him. Um, yeah. Okay. God bless you. Um you see, the God that we serve, please let's um, look at Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter one. Second Peter, chapter one. I read verse three. Second Peter, the Bible says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life. So you see that God has given everything that pertains to life. Everything. And if you look at it, he says all things that pertain unto life and godliness. You can put it this way, all things that pertain to physical and spiritual. You can put it this way, all things that pertain to health and well-being. You can put it this way, God has given us the blueprint for everything, but it will not just come to you and to me on a silver platter. That's why the, the, the discussion we are having is very important, is the personal will and the personal desire, the personal sacrifice to know what is written concerning you. To know and possess, not just to know, to know and possess what God has written concerning you. According as his divine power has given unto us all things, that pertain to life and godliness. How does it come? Through the knowledge. That's why it's very important. It's through the knowledge. Acquiring the knowledge. So, Sister Abigail, what are the things we need to know about God? Because, yes, God has given us everything, but the test is telling us that, yes, we have God in it, we have life. It is through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So how... And what do you need to know about God? Just there we go. Okay. Um, how to know God is to like every day read your Bible um, and then join in Bible studies 
I'm going to church, learning from um people who know more. And then also um what we need to know about God is how he is, his personality, who he is. Um okay, so yeah. you have, you've touched on something. We have to know his personality. Personality. Um Sister Mary. Uh here it is. Please, what is what is the, how do I know what do we know about the personality of God? Oof. One thing is this. Good evening, sir. One thing is that um, we we should believe and know that God God is. There's somebody. There's someone that is not a man that created the whole universe. Number one, and he is God. And then what we have learned. The, the word of God that came to us, what we found, eventually maybe we are Christians, uh, and then for maybe whoever we are, but there's a, a certain time that God called us, as in calling and saying, my daughter, my son, come to me. Then God become real to us. And we must believe that he is, and he's a reward of those that diligently search him. Seek him. We, uh, we need to seek God because one thing that draw us to God, the bridge between us and God is Jesus. And we believe we, it's not the flesh and blood that revealed that to us, but, but by the spirit, we know that is indeed Jesus came and he died for us and is the son of the living God. And then he's the one that will take us back to heaven. So knowing God and then to realize we know that already, then we need to seek him on a daily basis. We need to have a personal relationship with him to know that he is God. And he, he brought us here for a reason. And then that reason on a daily basis, we must be asking him, what am I doing here? Because many people have gone. Then there's a reason for me here. Because when we are here, God is the one that put us here for a purpose. It's not, a, it's not about our education or whoever we are on earth. There's a reason why we are here. And as long as we know that we have that God inside of us and it's living through us, then we must begin to follow him on a daily basis and know that there's a reason and we must diligently, as a, uh, as a bride, we'll be looking for the jewelries that he's going to wear on the wedding day. If he gets lost, we check everywhere. That's the way we seek God on a daily basis. And okay. then when we are seeking God, we are getting closer to him because the word thought is not easy to be holy. But I came to notice that we can be holy. Uh, because we can be holy because the, the more you consecrate yourself, you are knowing God, you are getting close to God. You see that some weight are shedding off your life. So it's, it's very, very important to be diligent in seeking him and to know that he is. And it's a reward of those that diligently seek him. The first God. thing is to know Christ. God and bless the second thing is to know that he's coming. And the second is to know our purpose here. What is our purpose? That's why I like this, uh, what is happening now, because where we are going eventually is everybody will have to go out and bring souls because souls are perishing as we are talking now and it's, it's, it's disheartening. And uh, I like this. Uh, okay, Mr. Mary, thank you. Thank God, you. Bless, God bless you. So yes. um, Mr. Mary has touched on, but we have to know God, his plan for me. You have mm -hmm. to know the steps to realizing that plan. So what do I need to know about God? His plan of salvation. You see, brethren, as we've said, we read in Hosea chapter 6, verse 3, then shall we know. We know his plan of salvation. We know the omnipotency of God, the omniscience of God. We know that. The, uh, Sister Abigail touched on the attributes of God. You see, this shouldn't be in the head. We know that God is faithful. Every promise that he has given, he's faithful and he's omnipotent. He has the, he is all powerful to bring to pass what God has said he would do. So as we look at knowing God, knowing the will of God, knowing the plan of God, let's know that we have that experience of salvation, his plan of salvation, his plan, his promises, his, his faithfulness. His omniscience. Then when we know all this, then, okay, if God is so powerful, 
if God knows everything about my life, if the promises of God are yea and amen and it cannot fail, then I must follow on. Then I must personally follow on to know this God. I, so, um, bra, I may not pronounce your name. Um, um, uh, Ingode Gam, Glass, Gladys. Gladys. I'm sorry, okay? So if, how do you as an individual follow on to know the Lord? That is going deeper. How can you as an individual in area of marriage, in area of career, in area of, of, of ministry, in area of calling, how do you follow on to know what God's plan and will is for you in every area. How do you do that? Please, um, uh, okay. Please, Gladys, um, you are on mute. You are on mute, please. Please, can you unmute yourself? You are speak. You are on mute. Please, please, um, Sister Gladys, you are on mute. You are on mute. Can you unmute yourself, please? Thank you. You are on mute again, please. Sorry. I I need to know know the Lord is is to follow him. No, to know please, how, uh, to please, follow. how do you? It's not. We've moved from the earlier knowledge. Now we are going deeper, following on deeper to know the Lord. So, as an individual. How do you follow on deeper to know the Lord? Hmm. I don't understand it well. Okay. So how do, do I, I've just, I'm showing something. So now, for instance, let's assume I'm not married. I've just finished. Um, 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 um. How do I, as an individual, begins to go deeper? Um, as an individual, I have a family life. You have a career. You have marriage. You have ministry. You have other things You where you want to live. How do I know it? That is the idea of following on to know as an individual personally how do I get my marriage sorted as a single person? How do I bring my career? Which career should I go in? What is the ministry of God for my life? These are all the typical plans of God for our lives. And it's up to us to go deeper in the Lord. It's up to us to go deeper in our walk with God. As Jeremiah 29 tells us, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. It's thought of peace and not of evil to bring you to what? An expected end, expected end. And because you have, you, are, you, you, belong, you, you have a family life, in your family life, go deeper in the Lord. Seek the face of God. What do you what do do you want my family to be in your ministry? Some of us we have ministries, but because we are not following on to know deeper of the things of God, we've cluttered our life with things that are not our ministry. We must go deeper in our ministry. Marriage. Is the will of God for us to get married. It's the will of God for not for us to dwell in singlehood. But 
You, the will of God will become real and true because God, we have looked at the attributes of God. He's sovereign. He wants you to succeed. He's omnipotent. And you go to him. You see, brethren, the issue of marriage and knowing the will of God in marriage, it comes in when sincerely we are following on to know more of God. Sincerely, we are following on to possess the nature of God. God will come through to us in Jesus' name. Because of time, let's move on. We've looked at how do I then go into specific areas of my life? We must have faith in God's promises and power. Brethren, don't allow anybody to tell you that your situation is permanent. It can be changed in area of career, in area of ministry, in area of marriage. Maybe you have even tried before and things look bleak, things look, look hazy. If we can just follow this simple step, I want to know God. I want to know his plan for me. I want to know his plan of salvation. I want to key into his omniscience, the omnipotency of God, the, the benefit of that to me. That must give you faith in God. And from faith, that must take you to what? To prayer. Prayer. You believe in God, so Lord, make it happen in the area of marriage. I believe in you. I believe in your own signs. I believe that um, you've given me all promises. Second Peter chapter, chapter 1, verse 3, you've given me everything. I believe. And as you are praying, faith in God, you are praying, you hear God. And for this to happen, faith in God, prayer of faith, hearing from God, you must declutter your mind. That is, take away idol. Not just in the area of marriage, not just in the area of ministry, not just in the every, just come to God with that open heart. Lord, I want your will. I want to follow on to know your perfect Man, your perfect will for my life, I declutter my life, my perception, my thoughts. I empty everything. All what I want is, Lord, your power to come through. Set time apart to wait on God, brethren. You see, follow on to know, following on to know. Then shall we know. If we follow on to know, it means that I, as a person, it's not somebody saying, oh, brother, pray, sister, pray. Oh, what are you doing about this area of your life? You yourself, you want to follow on. You want to go deeper. You want to connect to God deeper. And because of that, you set time apart. This area of my life, I want to have a clear picture of what God is telling me. This area of ministry, I want to have a clear picture of what God is telling me. This area of, of, of career, where to live, where to live. I want to have a clear picture of God telling me where to live. And then you trust God with all your heart. Before we, we, we run up, let's look at the Tower of Babel. When you look at the Tower of Babel, God had a project for man. And man too has his own project. And that is following on to know. God told man, conquer the earth. Be fruitful, spread. Man said, no. We will not do that. Then, contrary to the plan of God. Man said, I, I, we will build a tower. God said, spread and fill the earth. Man said, I, and what happened? Confusion. And brethren, in, in my spirit, that is where some of us, we are. It's not God's plan is there. His purposes are there. His plans are there. But because like the men at, at, during the Tower of Babel, they were going contrary to God's will to God's plan. And because of that, what happened? There was confusion. And I'm believing God. Now, as we seek on to know, as we seek on to know the will of God, 
every confusion, every confusion, anything that is beclouding us, knowing the will of God in marriage, knowing the will of God in career, knowing the will of God in family life, knowing the will of God in, 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 in ministry, everything will be clearer in Jesus' name. One thing was that when God, when God's will and the will of man is in conflict, there's only one result. The will of God will prevail. Why, why should we waste our time struggling and guessing, guessing, oh, this one can happen, that one will happen, let me do that. Look at them, the guys at Babel. They wasted their time. They wasted their resources. Confusion came. Ultimately, the will of God prevailed because man started filling the earth again. My brother, my sister, if we follow on to know what will happen, then the Bible says, his going forth is prepared as a morning and he shall come to you. He shall come to me as a rain, as the latter and former rain onto the earth. Clarity, blessings god will come through if we follow on to know if personally we follow on to seek to wait and to know and anything that is in conflict or in confliction to the will of god we say we will stay clear of it may the word of god bless us in jesus name amen Please, is there any uh, contributions or questions um, regarding the discussion? It's not preaching section, it's a discussion section. So um, is there any questions, is there any more contributions that um, we want to look at? Oh, please, let's talk by God's grace. Um, the, script, the, the scripture that you gave us in the social chapter, six, the one that's on the screen. Yeah, Hosea chapter. Um, three, six verse three. Yeah. That says, it's, it's going forth, it's prepare, prepare as the morning, and it shall come unto us, as the rain, as the latter and former rain onto the earth. That means when we, everything will be clear to us. Like, you're, like you said to us that when we consecrate ourselves, pray more, and then, I mean, giving our heart and everything unto the Lord, is different from being born again or sanctification or whatever. But now we want to know the perfect will of God for ourselves in every areas of our lives. Then when we're now seeking the face of God, everything will be clear to us as seen. You know, when there was, if there was rain yesterday, we know how the rain, how everything went. And the former rain, we can, we can say last time, this time there was a rain and this, that. And it's very clear to us that the way God will deal with us, everything will become very clear. I just want to see. And that was here, chapter 6, verse 3, is very, very powerful because God is saying to us, is comparing what is going to, the way it's going to work with us as what we know, as what we are experienced with, as in the former rain and the latter rain. We experienced it. And we are going to experience latter rain. So uh, when we work with the Lord, and then we we have a personal relationship, a serious personal relationship, apart from needs, then other things we follow. That's all I want to say. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Okay, can we um please? I mean, I mentioned the name very well, but um, I'll try. Is um, I'll see. Mudiamin, or Simudiamin, please. Um, any contribution or observation or questions? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Um, he tries his name. It's Utemudiamin. The N is kind of silent. So it's like a me. Um, 
what I took from the passage or what we've done so far is that as children people, we can always remember that God will be there to direct us and to show us to show us the way. But then I just wanted to say that towards the end of the slide, I think seven or so, when it's talking about God's plan for marriage, career, I feel like we didn't really expatiate on that. I don't know if it's just me. Okay. Because it's just more of bullet points. I don't know if it's because of time. But then at least I've learned that we should involve God in what ever want to do whatever decision and he will be there to carry us through. So yeah. Amen. So um to shed more light um on in terms of um uh, God's plan for me. So you see um my sister what the Bible is very clear. The Bible is God's compass for mankind. That is um God's plan. So um in terms of how do I know God's plan for my life? You go back to the Bible. Because look at uh, Jeremiah the test again. He says, I know. It's not God. God it, everything that will happen to you and to me, God knows. God knows. So in terms of real practical things, let's bring career for example. Even the course you want to study at university or at college. And when you finish college, your area of speciality you want to go. You bring it to God. You practically bring it to God. Pray the Lord. What do you want me to do? What is your plan for me? I remember pe personally when my A-level A A A results came. By God's grace, my A-level result was really good. And at that time, the in thing at that time was that people who had good A-level results, you, are, you go to Legon in, um, in Ghana, you go to do uh, administration. But by the grace of God, I knew what God wanted me to do. So even it was coming from my teachers, my pastors and everywhere, I just told that God, your will will be done. I will do this. This is the area of profession I want to go. And when you know it, you because you, you saw the face of God, career-wise, marriage, you want to pray, you want to, you, you, you want to know the will of God in marriage. You don't come with preconceived ideas. You don't come with, I want the man to be like this, to be like that. You come with the simplicity of heart. Pray to God. I want your will be done. Show me. So it is up to you as an individual to figure out how do, what is God's plan for me. It's up to you as an individual. Develop yourself. Seek the face of God so that you know how God speaks to you. And when you know how God speaks to you, on the basis of scripture, there are so many promises. And as children of God, we have the Spirit of God. As many that are led by the Spirit of God, the Bible says they are the children of what? Of God. God will lead you to specific promises, to a specific word. And on the basis of that, you stand on those promises. Lord, this thing, it will, it will happen. In marriage, it will happen. In ministry, it will happen. And that is how you discover and know God's will. Please, any more questions or contributions or observations? Thank you. God bless you. Any more questions, observations, and contribution? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I just want to make a little contribution. Uh, still under his plan for me, and I just want to read that scripture acts chapter 13 verse 2 or acts chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 i read it says now they were in the church that was at antioch certain prophets and teachers then their names were mentioned and verse 2 says as they ministered to the lord and fasted 
the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So this is a practical example of human beings that God already has a plan for them. But how did the plan God? How they got to know the plan? It is in the place of ministering unto the Lord, waiting on the Lord, seeking the face of the Lord. Then the Holy Ghost spake, and it's applicable to every Christian today that God has a ministry for us. He know He has somebody who wants us to marry, but beyond that, He also has a ministry for every one of us. But we don't know about that ministry except just like as our pastor told us, we follow on to know the Lord. What uh, these believers were doing here, they gathered together, ministering to the Lord, fasted, waiting on the Lord, praying. That's basically a practical example of following on to know the Lord. So as they followed on to know the Lord, seeking his face, eventually the Holy Ghost said, this is what Paul and Barnabas will do. And it's not only peculiar to Paul and Barnabas or to Saul and Barnabas, it's applicable to all of us as well. So to discover that plan, the family life, the career, marriage, ministry, or any other thing, there is a need for us to get closer to God, spend time in his presence. Yes, we go to church, we need to Bible study, but set time apart on our own to know him. It may be through the study of the scriptures, going beyond just quiet time, studying the scriptures, just seeking to know God, waiting upon him so that uh, the Holy Ghost in this place, it wasn't man telling uh, Paul and Bana, Saul and Barnabas what they had to do, it was the Holy Ghost. And if we also give ourselves to seeking the Lord, to know him better, the Holy Ghost will start speaking to us on every area of our lives. Sorry, sir. Thank we you, have, Pastor. We have three minutes left. The classes will close in three minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Pastor. God bless you. Please, is there any more questions or observations and contributions? Brother Samson, we haven't heard you, we haven't heard you, we haven't heard your voice. Any observations, contributions, or questions? Uh, sorry, sir, I don't have anything to contribute at the moment. Okay, thank you. Um, blessing, and not um, Prof. Blessing, but Blessing. Praise the Lord. Um, we thank the Lord. This is just uh, a taster. And as our pastor said, Pastor Ayo said, it is when the Holy Spirit or through the reading of the word begin to speak. The Holy Spirit said, separate. The word of God says, let man fulfill and fill the earth. And it started happening. So by the grace of God, Let's please go back to Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. Dig deep. Follow on to know the Lord. And God will come through as rain with great blessings in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this brief discussion. I pray that every one of us, we will take home. We will go out with the grace and the strength to know you, to follow on to know you. And we will experience great blessing and breakthrough in life, in career, in ministry, in marriage, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. God bless you all. Please, let's go back to the um, the main, main room. Let's leave the break room now and go back to the main room. Thank you. God bless you.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, I believe all the classes are now closed and we're all back together. Um, and I believe the Lord, it's been such an enriching time. Um, and I know we've learned so much in all our classes. I also hope we're engaged well. Um, and because it's it's really a lot to, to interact and it's always, always good to interact and to learn and ask questions. Um, so right now, we are just gonna have um, some words of insight and nugget from uh, exhortation from our um, regional pastor, um, Pastor Funcha Fabi, as we just um, wait to wrap it up um, for this evening session. So you're welcome, sir. Thank you, Pastor. And I want to um, especially appreciate all our mommies, all our pastors and our leaders who have spoken to us this night. Uh, by the grace of God, I was able to move around uh, the breakout rooms and I personally learned some uh, good, good things um, so that the women will know that I popped in. Um, I bless God what our teacher told us that we should rather be water than fire, because when fire is burning, it's water that will quench it. When you are thirsty, it's water you drink. And then water is quite flexible. Put it in any shape, round shape, you will just fill it. Square, you fill it up, quite flexible. So as we relate with one another in, family, in the family, all our children under the age of uh, 18, all our married, all our singles, you are learning the rope. Let's make sure that we are quite malleable to God. and We can change and anybody can change. And the Lord will give us the grace in Jesus name. But before we all go, I just pray that the Lord will help me to uh, stay within time. I want to just um, read two passages of the scriptures and equally um, just give you um, a to F. The time is not there with, you know, for us. I will have given you A to Z in communication, but I'll just say A to F and stop at you know F. Let's please pray. Father, we bless and exalt your holy name this evening. We worship your holy name for the opportunity we all have to interact with one another in this area that's very crucial and fundamental in interpersonal relationship, which is communication. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, as we wrap everything up, let the Holy Spirit drill all these things that we have learned today, drill them into our hearts in Jesus' name. Make our families better and prepare us for heaven. In Jesus' holy name, we pray, amen. Now, I want to read to you from 2 Timothy chapter two. 2 Timothy chapter two in verse seven. This is Paul the apostle speaking to this young pastor, his children in the faith, of course. And he now said, after he has written 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and he got to chapter two, and he says, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Church, all our men and women, our elderlies, consider what our leaders and our guests have told us. And I pray the Lord will give you understanding. Holy Spirit, we let this word that we've heard today have tentacles and spread to every areas, or every area of your life. You know what David said? He said, God has spoken once and twice have I, have I heard this. You don't need to hear the same word over and over and over and over again. He heard God once. So God spoke once rather, and he had him twice. Our teachers have spoken to us within the limited time that they have. Consider what they have told you and may the Lord give you understanding in Jesus' name. So the next thing I'm going to is A to F. 
of communication. I'm starting with answer. Many a times, you know, in communication, communication should be two ways. Somebody asks a question, then answer them. It will not be right to answer question with question. Darlene, are you okay? Why are you asking? That's what normally calls fight. Answer the, the, the sister. If it's your wife that's asking you that, and if your husband is the one asking you the question, sister, please answer. And when you answer question with question, what you are saying is that that person is a fool. It's an insult. Please answer and let there be communication. Re-communication is two ways. And A there again, I say that it stands for atmosphere. Thank God for our sister, our beloved mommy that came from Yorkshire to speak to us. She made us to realize that we must make sure that even when you are hurt, you don't just bust out and snap and say anything. She even told us that even at that time, just sink it in. You can withdraw from that atmosphere. Don't raise it at that time. Wait until the right time. When that, woman, when that man maybe has left the following day, you can ask, oh, darling, the way you addressed me that time really hurts me. And by the grace of God, since we are teaching restitution in this church, that man is now calm, is now sober. He will be able to reflect, oh, are you serious? I didn't know it hurt, so I'm so very solid. sorry, darling. And then maybe he comes around to hug you and then we resolve everything. And you two shouldn't prove difficult. Now you want to mention something, your husband is just coming back from work. From work. And maybe that was the day that the, the line manager did a review for him and the review was not all that positive. He's tired, he's feeling hot with what the line manager said. And as the man is coming in, eh, rent is due. I hope you are listening. And you are saying rent is due, you want the money. And the man is saying, but you know, I'm just coming back from work. You didn't even ask how the office went and all of that. That's not the right atmosphere. God will help us in Jesus name. And I want to say that this and mommies, let's create a good atmosphere in the home for communication. Please, B is for body language. They have made us to realize that, you know, research made us to realize that, look, most of the things that we say, about 70% of it is body language. What's body language? Our sisters are very good at this. They will tell you, oh, don't you see, did you not notice the way she was uh, rolling her eyes when she was talking to, to the pastor? Did you not see the way she was raising her hand? That's body language. They will interpret it for you. And most of the time I respect our, our mothers because they know what, we, what we're talking about. When you are talking to your husband, when you are talking to your wife, when you are talking to the children, make sure your body language is correct. And in relationship as well, let our brothers be able to interpret the body language of our sisters. The Lord has created our women in a way that they are very subtle in their communication. Most of the time they don't talk, but their body language will show. When you know your wife is down, that may be the time to go close to her and find out what the problem is. And then she'll be able to open up and let you know. And sometimes they want something, they might use the body language to communicate to you. And that's why the Bible says you should deal with them with knowledge. Body language is very important. When the children are feeling uncomfortable or they are hurt, let's use the body language to know what they are saying. And the children too, I remember when we were growing up, our mothers in those days, if my mom used her eyes, rolled her eyes and maybe blink her eyes to you in the public, maybe so a stranger is offering you food or something and my mom did not want you to take it and she just blinked her eyes to you and you pretended as if you didn't notice her, she would do like this to you. You'll meet her at home and then she will now deal with you. That's body language. So please, brethren, let's develop and improve in our body language. And our brothers, when you are speaking to our women, let's mind our body language as we talk to them. C for 
commitment, commit to communication. Communication needs full attention. Like I was with the brothers and our brother there was saying, your wife is talking to you and you're watching Nigerian politics. Who won the presidential election? Eh, daddy, this, this, this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. You are not paying attention. So you must commit to that communication and concentrate. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And the same thing with, with our wives. When our women now start to nurse their children, they can be very emotionally attached with the children. And your husband is saying something, but because you are cut off by what you are doing with your children and you are not paying attention, it's not good. And our children too, when daddy and mommy are talking to you, that's not the time to be busy on PlayStation. So the next thing of D is to discuss. I've mentioned that communication should be both ways. And for that D, I bring up don't. Don't involve a third party in your communication without having exhausted you know, the second party, the person that is involved. Your wife is directly involved. Don't go and report your wife to her mom. Don't go and report your wife to the pastor straight away. Wife, don't go and report your, your wife, I mean, your husband, to her friend, I mean, his friend outside. No, sort things out. Make sure that you don't get third parties involved straight away. E is for explain. There are situations that you need to explain, explain things. You don't just assume they should understand. You might need to explain in some situation for you know for you to drive in the information you are saying, particularly for children. And also sometimes if your the wife is speaking to the husband, try to explain, let the husband get it. And sometimes you even ask, did you understand what I said? Say yes. And the person will repeat it back to you. So make sure you explain. And then F for face-to-face -face communication. This day and age of technology, you are not in the bedroom. And then she is in the sitting room. Uh, hello, the, the, no members of the same family. The husband is talking to the wife on the phone. Put once you come home, let that come, uh, so let that telephone be somewhere. Communicate face to face. Communicate face to face with your parents as well. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And. Another you know, word for that F is frankness. Let's be honest and be sincere with one another. And can I give you one more F? F-U-N, fun. When that particular you know, hidden king saw Abraham and Sarah, I said, ah, look, but you call this person your sister. No, this is more than the sister because they were playing. Sarah was almost 80 years that time. They still had some time for fun. And our men and our women, we let, let's, let's practice this. And our, I pray that our, our, our families will be healthy in Jesus' name. Now, before we go, now I'm going to shock you because it's going to be a riot act that I'm reading out to you. Say, ah, Pastor Riot, what have you done? Yes, I will tell you. In Romans chapter 13, Romans chapter 13, he said, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there's no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to them, the, to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Without them not be afraid of, of the power, do that which is good, and thou shall have praise of the same. Now, the reason why I read this passage, do you know that the law of this nation forbid violence in families? The law of this nation does not want the, uh, the, the, the husband to assault the wife, the wife to also assault you know, the husband. And the, the laws of this nation does not want us to be, to be bullying one another. Domestic violence is against the law of this land. It's a crime. And I'm reading the, the, the riot act out to the whole church today. 
the church does not support or tolerate domestic violence. And if anything like that happens, please get your pastor involved immediately. Immediately, please. And our pastors know what to do straight away. I was in another region and I, I read this riot act to them and I said, look, if you, if you assault your wife, if you bully your, if you, you know, hurt, any, hurt, hurt your wife, I'll be the first person to call police on you. Please, let's communicate. Let's love one another. Let there be joy in our family. Let there be peace in our family. Let's not involve the social services. Let no social services come, come here to start taking our children. God forbid. I am happy to say God forbid. We'll only be hearing of them outside. Let them be doing their job. They don't have business in the church. We have enough counsel of God to keep our home joyful, healthy, fun, and, and very, you know, fun, loving, and happy. And the Lord will make it so in Jesus' name. Amen. And for our brethren who are just coming to join us in the UK, the, mm -hmm. the law of this land does not tolerate, you know, spanking of children. Domestic violence is against the law. Mm -hmm. And the church does not support it. The law will help us. So we're going to commit ourselves to the Lord in prayer now. That all that we have heard today, let the Holy Spirit speak to us, touch our lives, tame us, and make us who we ought to be. Over to our moderator, please. I just want us to keep on praying. Um, there's so much the Lord has impacted to us this evening. I want you to tell the Lord, Lord, help me to improve, to get better, to do better, communicate better. We've seen so many areas I'm sure you know you can improve on. You can do better. And the Lord can give us the grace to really be the best so that our homes can indeed be heavens and earth. Mm -hmm. Our home can be heaven and earth as the Lord desires. Mm -hmm. Let's pray that where things have, you know, in the past been wrong or the foundation has been so shaky and rocky, God will help us to rebuild. God will help us to now move forward together, better communicators, better engagers in the home, you know, better friends. The family would really, the home would really be a place of joy, happiness, the presence of God, the unity in the home will constantly make God, you know, be the center of our home joy of the Lord will continually be our strength. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you. We bless you because you've so much impacted our lives this um, evening. Thank you, Lord, for all the messages that have come through all our speakers, all the instructions, all the important points, and, and finally, even the the final exhortation from our regional pastor, I pray, Lord, for each and every one of us, we would really walk at it. We would intentionally, you know, do our best to put in these measures so that we will see a change for the better. We'll see our homes really be a place where the love of God really radiates and permeates. We'll see our home really be a place where the children are so happy to be home and to be a part of the family where Lord Christ is really exemplified to the letter in every area. So let it be, oh God. And Lord, where there's been breakdown, I pray you repair those altars, those foundation, and you would rebuild the home and family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Go into this week, Lord, your presence will go with us as yes. we begin to put this into practice. We'll see better homes, better families, and joyful homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bless all our speakers and all those you've used, oh God, to be a blessing to us. I pray, Lord, you bless them tremendously, Lord. And at the end of it all, we will have every cause to glorify your name. 
Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, everyone. I once again want to appreciate all our speakers. We really, really appreciate you, and we really thank you for your time and for the effort, and the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And brethren, mm -hmm. don't forget, 9 to 10 p.m., we're still back for our, um, our prayer meeting. <laughs> You know, this is our month of prayer and fasting. So let's do well to come back at nine o'clock and the Lord will bless us. Let's share the grace and fellowship after the count of two. You can unmute yourself. One, two. God bless you. 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 God bless you.